say, how long are you going to go on? So I promise I will try to move along quickly. It's pretty hard to sum up a 50-year friendship in three or four minutes. Uh, and I will say, Nancy just commented that he didn't not drink and why he didn't smoke. Why didn't cuss, to my knowledge, either. 50 years being around hockey with me, and I'm telling you, if somebody doesn't cuss at all, that is a bit of a rarity. But he, but he was a man's man, as you all know. He served in both the Atlantic and Pacific theaters in World War II. Uh, so, anyway, I first met Roy almost 50 years ago. I was in high school. I was just starting the game of ice hockey. And I, I figured out pretty quickly that how important it is to have sharp skates. <clears throat> Other players said, hey, there's this great guy. He sharpens skates for free. I figured, well, there's got to be a catch. I introduced myself. He said, yeah, drop him by. And for the 40 more years that I kept playing, Roy did my skates. And I run a rink and had my own skate chart for him. Uh, he was just this great guy that everybody described who shot him skates for free. For 20 years, he was Mr. Rosen to me. And then one night, he was driving out to a hockey game with Queenie with me. And he just out of the blue said, hey, Dave, call me Roy. I said, well, Roy, that doesn't really feel right. You've been Mr. Rosen to me for 20 years. And uh, he just goes, OK, Mr. Garth, have it your way. <laughs> and that was Roy. He was a man of few words. But he always had a point when he spoke. And I personally was so appreciative that he insisted on me taking it to Roy because we lost the formality of Mr. and took our friendship to a higher level. I was asked to speak on behalf of the rec department and what Roy meant to us all here. Well, if you walk around this building, you will see the things he made on behalf of the department. Anything that's birch, that's wood, uh, Roy probably did, starting with this podium. Uh, I mean, he had a, a smaller podium. He did skate cubicles for our metal skates. He did locker room benches, stalls. He did the coaches' platform on the players' benches, the crow's nest, which is just a wonderful addition. He did the uh, stalls in the two women's changing rooms. He did table carts for the senior citizens. Uh, and the list just goes on and on and on. And actually, we may not even be sitting here without Roy's efforts during the campaign to pass the bond issue to build this complex. He took it on himself to deal with the senior citizens groups in this town, of which there are a good number, and they all vote. And he just worked really tirelessly extolling the benefits this complex would have for the entire community. And his, and along with others, the efforts led to this thing uh, being here and being reality. More than the, the contributions and the projects he did around here, Roy became a friend to our staff. He loved coming over and sitting and visiting with Leon and Kevin and the part-time staff with Michelle. He had a natural connection with her, her love of military history, his service in World War II, and his son's, her son's service in the Navy. He used to always comment to me that he had to keep Mickey Sr.'s happy. What do they need? What can they use? And with Joe, there was also a natural connection in their mechanical skills and aptitude. Joe frequently sought advice from Roy, and Roy loved being able to help. He had a special bond with Debbie because of his understanding of the demands of taking care of his child with special needs. And he and I had our original hockey connection, frequently traveled games with me, and loved talking about the team and watching practices. To us, he wasn't just Roy, he was our friend. He received a nice amount of recognition for his service, uh, especially later in life. Uh, he's on the Residence for Recreation plaque. He is on our, our tree recognizing distinguished service on behalf of the Rec Department. He received from the Chamber of Commerce a Heart of Gold uh, a Community Award. He received a Spirit Award from the St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, there is a display in the trophy case. Uh, noting that honor. The, the crow's nest uh, is named in his honor, Roy's Roots, as he built it. And then he, he participated in an honor flight to Washington, D.C. for his service in World War II, which I was extremely privileged and honored to be his escort. 
He never sought recognition for his efforts and contributions. In fact, mostly he was uncomfortable being in the spotlight. But from our perspective, it was wonderful to see him receive some recognition and claim, uh, a claim for all those efforts. If I had to tell someone in a minute or two what Roy was all about, I would use these props. This is a fishing lure, a fishing fly. Roy tied his own flies, and I would tell you how much he loved the outdoors, and particularly fishing. It would tell you that he was a patient man and persistent. Well into his 80s, he and Mrs. Rosen loved going to their ranch. He'd still climb on his ATV and explore the different trails. Many of you have probably received one of these trees. It shows you his creative side. He made them to give to other people, and that demonstrates his generosity, his desire to show his appreciation to others for their contributions to the community. And finally, the skate holder for sharpening skates. For the hockey community, more than anything, the skateboarder demonstrates his passion for the game, his love of youth, as Nancy mentioned, the enjoyment he got out of watching kids play this great game. He loved being around young people and fed off their energy and recognized that they're our future. I want to close with three quick stories. Uh, I was fortunate to spend two long trips in Europe. I returned from one, and I commented to Roy how much I love the old centers of uh, cities in Europe and how many of them had courtyards with life-size chess pieces. And I said, well, wouldn't it be neat to, like, in Gazebo Park, have a life-size chess set? Well, three days later, Roy comes up with three prototype pieces. I'm like, well, Roy, we haven't even talked to the park board yet. Um, and it's so ironic, because his favorite expression was, don't rush me or I quit. But he moved faster than any of us. And Roy built two full life-size sets. One they took to the ranch, and recognizing uh, that maybe uh, we'd be better off playing checkers, he also built two sets of checkers to go with the chess pieces. Uh, he, he, uh, another story, he stopped by and was visiting, and he commented he needed to come up with more people to receive the trees. He, he'd like to give the trees to people that he felt uh, had made contributions, special contributions to the community. And then he said, you know, I have over 150 trees in the basement ready to give, give away. I just said, well, Roy, either you have to lower your standards, or you've got to stop, you gotta stop making them. And, and maybe my favorite story is a, is a hockey story. Roy served as a goal judge for the Junior Blues for years and years. And if you don't know hockey, a goal judge sits behind the net and helps the referee determine whether or not the puck crossed the line. Okay? Uh, and, and Roy is working a weekend series with a team in from out of town in Detroit. And there's a controversial play. They think they scored. Roy say no, never, never crossed the line. So later the game's over. Coach Ian, Jack's here somewhere, and, and, and uh, Jim Jost, the uh, coordinator for the junior boys, are in the lobby at Acton talking to the owner of this team from Detroit. And Roy walks up, Mr. Beat, he's got an under scratch over, over an eye, and he, just, and he says to Jack and Jimmy, hey, in two weeks from now, I'm getting the other cataract removed. <laughs> And it, it should really, it should really help. <laughs> anyway, I don't think I've ever met a man who enjoyed helping others more than Roy did. It's what he was about. He was just an absolutely great example of what it means to get back to your community, to your friends, and to your family. I know he was not a particularly religious man, but I think he was a spiritual man. And what a wonderful example of being your brother's keeper. And if we are lucky enough to get to heaven and arrive at the gates, I'm sure Roy's going to be waiting there to help us enter. And I'm sure the gates 
will be recently refinished <laughs> in several coats of varnish.